रेडियो ट्रांसमीटर ऑपरेटिंग एट ए वेव लेंथ ऑफ फोर नाइंटी टू मीटर्स हैज टवर एंटीना ऑफ हाइट वन ट्वेंटी फोर मीटर्स वट इज अ रेडिएशन रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द एंटीना ऑप्शन ए ट्वेंटी फाइव ओम्स ऑप्शन बी थर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव ओम्स ऑप्शन सी फिफ्टी ओम्स ऑप्शन डी सेवेंटी थ्री ओम्स The solution to this problem is here lambda is given four ninety two meters height is given height is one twenty four meter so height is equal to one twenty four means what is the radiation distance radiation distance is equal to eighty pi square into dl by lambda whole square dl by lambda whole square your height is nothing but uh, dl height is nothing but dl but uh, if you observe h is approximately equal to lambda by 4 here that is uh, 124 is approximately equal to 490 by 4 that is uh, 4 ones 4 twos 4 threes so 123 so height is approximately equal to lambda by 4 so if height is approximately equal to lambda by 4 means this is a quarter by monopole Indirectly, it is mentioned as a quarter wave monopole. So, what is the radiation distance for quarter wave mono quarter wave monopole? Our radiation is equal to thirty six point five ohms. Thirty six point five ohms. Suppose if you solve this problem by using this formula, you will get fifty uh, ohms, which is already present in the answer. So, so don't confuse here. Just compare the relation with the height and the lambda. So here, since it is approximately equal to lambda by four, which is nothing but a quarter wave monopole. So for a quarter wave monopole, obviously the radiation distance is 36.5 ohms. 36.5 ohms. So option B is correct option for this question. 36.5 ohms is correct answer. The the next question is for a dipole antenna for a. dipole antenna option a the radiation intensity is the radiation intensity is maximum along the normal to the dipole axis option b the current distribution the current distribution along its length is uniform irrespective of length option c the effective length the effective length equals physical length equals to physical length option d 
the input impedance is independent of location of feed point so these are the four options given for this question so for a dipole antenna so the first option we will verify one by one so the first option here is the radiation intensity is maximum along the normal to the dipole axis so the radiation pattern for a dipole antenna is looks like this so this is a dipole antenna the radiation pattern is like this the radiation pattern is like this both sides so this is the normal to the dipole this is the normal to the dipole so the radiation in intensity is maximum along the normal to the dipole so option a is correct option a is correct and uh, the option b the current distribution along its length is uniform irrespective of length suppose uh, this is a dipole antenna means the current distribution is like this some dipole antennas of different length have distributions like this also so option b is a wrong option so because current distribution definitely depends upon length the effective length equals to physical length suppose if we consider a monopole antenna this is a infinite ground plane here the total length i am taking is like this because this also acts uh, this is a one of the dipole but i am considering here uh, the effective length as only lambda by 4 so i am neglecting this part so the effective length equals to physical length so that is wrong total is lambda by 2 here the effective length is only lambda by 4 only for a monopole so the effective length equals to physical length so this option is also correct and the fourth option is the input impedance is independent of location of feed point no this is also wrong because input impedance depends upon location of the feed point because it depends upon length where we are giving the feed also it varies with respect to the feed point also so b c d are wrong the option a is correct the next problem is for an 8 feet the bracket it given 2.4 meters parabolic disc antenna parabolic disc antenna operating at 4 gigahertz operating at 4 gigahertz the minimum distance the minimum distance required for far field measurement is approximately 8 to option a 7.5 cm option b 15 cm option c 15 m option d 150 meters so this is another kind of problem the solution to this problem is here it is given a 8 feet parabolic disc so total uh, disc is 8 feet operating at 4 gigahertz the minimum distance required for far field measurement so what is the boundary between near field and far field r is equal to 2 d square by lambda where d is the largest dimension of the antenna so total dimension so here it is given 8 feet that is 2.4 meters 2.4 meters lambda lambda is equal to i can calculate by using c by f formula that is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second since all options are given in uh, or you can use either centimeters or meters i am using here for meters 3 into 10 power 8 by f f is 4 gigah 4 into 10 power 9 so this is nothing but uh, Um, three by four, three by forty. 
3 by 40. Therefore, R is equal to 2 into 2.4 whole square by 3 by 40. 3 by 40. That is equal to 2 into 2.4 into 2.4 into 40 by 3. So this is equal to 3.8. So this is equal to 2 into 8 into 4. Because 0.8 into 40 is nothing but 8 into 4. Into 2.4. So, simplify. If you simplify, you will get uh, approximately, approximately this is uh, 153.6 meters you will get approximately. So, here it is given approximately what is the option? What is the option? So, approximately if you compare this is nothing but 150 meters, 150 meters. So, option D is correct. Next problem is, problem number 5, the far field, the far field of an antenna varies with distance r is option a 1 by r option b 1 by r square option c 1 by r cube option d 1 by square root of r so this is very straightforward question so far field of an antenna always varies with, res with respect to 1 by r so option a is correct Next, uh, another small topic is small loop antenna. So, a loop antenna is like this. current propagating like this i it is at a distance some distance r radius r square loop i am considering radius r so here uh, consider a small circular loop of radius r carrying a uniform current i is equal to i naught cos omega t this is the x y z directions The loop area is S is equal to pi r square since this is a circular loop. Single loop. For a loop with n turns, suppose if the loop has n turns, then S is given by n into pi r square. The radiation resistance so directly I am giving the formula here the radiation resistance of small loop antenna is R radiation is equal to 320 pi power 4 into S square by lambda power 4 lambda power 4 so this is the radiation resistance of a loop antenna so just keep in mind this formula problem is 
the radiation uh, resistance the radiation resistance of a circular loop of one turn is 0.01 ohm the radiation the radiation resistance of 5 turns of such loop will be option a 0.002 ohms option b 0.05 ohms option c 0.01 ohm option d 0.25 ohms so the solution is here they are asking so radiation resistance of a single loop is single loop uh, radiation resistance of a circular loop of 1 turn is 0.1 then uh, if the loop has 5 uh, turns then what is the radiation resistance we know that radiation resistance of a circular loop is given by 320 pi power 4 s square by lambda power 4 where s is uh, n pi r square r is radius of loop r is radius of loop n is number of turns number of turns so radiation resistance then directly proportional to n square number of loops square therefore r radiation 1 by r radiation 2 is equal to n1 square by n2 square so n1 is single loop n1 is equal to 1 then uh, n2 is equal to 5 5 loops then they are asking r radiation 2 r radiation 2 is equal to how much so r radiation 1 is 0.1 ohm so 0.1 by r radiation 2 is equal to n1 is 1 square 1 by 25 therefore r radiation 2 is equal to 25 into 0.01 0.25 ohms 0.25 ohms so directly the radiation resistance of five loops is so what happens radiation resistance is increasing if the number of loops are increasing obviously radiation resistance increases so same concept here so option d is correct option d is correct here. so here uh, the radiation resistance is directly proportional to number of uh, turns of the loop number of turns of the loop so this is very very important and one more thing the radiation resistance is uh, directly proportional to r power 4 that is radius to the power of 4 so depends upon the radius of the loop also uh, radiation resistance depends the next uh, concept is antenna characteristics so in this topic uh, we will discuss some basic uh, terminology of a antenna so the important characteristics are the first one is radiation pattern second one is radiation intensity third one is directive gain or directivity both are different actually fourth one is power gain power gain so we will discuss one by one the first one is radiation pattern
So how we can define this radiation pattern is it is a three dimensional graph. It is a three dimensional graph of radiation at far field. At a far field. So this is nothing but a graph of the radiation at a far field. Because at a far field only we will get a radiation field. And this, if we draw E versus theta, if we draw E versus theta for constant phi, for constant phi, it is called E plane pattern. E plane pattern. If we draw electric field versus phi for theta is equal to a, a particular angle pi by 2 is called H plane pattern. H plane pattern. For example, for a Cartesian dipole, if you consider Cartesian dipole, the patterns are looks like this. So the x and y axis, the dipole is like this. The dipole is like this. So the E plane pattern looks like this for a Cartesian dipole. This is a theta. This is E plane. Phi is equal to 0. For phi is equal to 0, the representation is like this. Similarly, the H plane looks like this. The H plane looks like this. This is phi. The theta is equal to pi by 2. The H plane is a complete circle. Complete circle. So like this we can draw the radiation pattern. So this is directly here I am giving. Actually we have to uh, calculate uh, E and uh, for a particular angle we have to substitute uh, the angles and we have to calculate the magnitudes and uh, we have to draw the things. So the better way is by using a, a MATLAB program we can directly uh, draw the graphs. So well, this is a standard Hattie and dipole uh, E plane and uh, H plane patterns how they look like. Here uh, uh, I am considering only one lobe it's called a main lobe. So the main lobe uh, looks like this. This is called a main lobe. So main lobe is nothing but uh, uh, the lobe in which maximum power is concentrated or maximum power flow takes place. So uh, with, uh, with respect to this uh, major lobe also we will get some minor lobes. Minor lobes. These are called uh, minor lobes. Here we will define two terms. The first one is half power beam width. This is known as half power beam width. Half power beam width. How we can define this is, it is the angle, it is the angle between half power points, half power points of the main lobe, of the main lobe. So, suppose this is a half power point, this is another half point one, point for half power point P1 and P2. So, the angle between these two. The angle between these two is known as half power beam width. The angle between these two is known as half power beam width. The second one is 
beam width uh, between first nulls bwfn beam width between first nulls beam width between first nulls how we can define this is it is the angle between first nulls so the first null point is this one the second uh, the first null one point uh, this side is this one so the angle between these two so where i am getting a first null so the angle between these two the angle between these two is bw fn beam width between first nulls beam width between first nulls so it is shown here beam width uh, between first nulls so this is the angle between first this is the first null this is the first null so the angle between these two is the beam width between first nulls generally this half power beam width is equal to half into beam width between first nulls half power beam width is equal to half into approximately this is not exactly half power beam width is equal to half into beam width between first nulls another important definition is isotropic radiator isotropic radiator so how we can define is this is a hypothetical antenna it is a hypothetical hypothetical antenna hypothetical antenna which radiates which radiates equally in all directions which radiates equally in all directions so this is not a practical one because no antenna radiates equally in all directions so that's why we are uh, calling it as a hypothetical one which radiates equally in all directions and that is uh, this type of radiation which radiates uh, equally in all radiate all directions generally we represent with a point source the radiation the radiator we can represent with a point source so this is the definition of a isotropic radiator generally this uh, radiator isotropic radiator is used uh, as a reference uh, as a reference uh, antenna as a reference antenna uh, when we are uh, doing some calculations uh, for uh, some uh, mm, for analyzing some antennas we will consider this uh, isotropic as a reference antenna so this is the definition of isotropic radiator which radiates equally in all directions